This lesson today seems like it's really applied to us for today. And the subject of this lesson is return to love and justice. And the word mean return means to come back. And love, we know God is love. And justice is doing what is right. And we have a lot of situations around us today because of the word justice. And we're going to go on and get into our lesson today. And our author, the writer of the lesson today, is Amos. He was a man of property, property, property. And he wrote the book of Jose. And this book is showing how God loves us and is teaching us about our disobedience. And in this book, he mentioned God loving us as a son and God loving as a married to an unfaithful. I can't get to I can't get to, to the thing. Uh, unfaithful. I don't know where the, you know to my speaker. So we have four outlines in today's lesson. The first outline, Israel delivering. The second outline, God reaffirming love. The, four, the third outline, the punishment of Israel. And the fourth outline, seek God, love, and justice. So, Jose had the job, the order, to go and preach to the one in the northern kingdom. They had become so disobedient to God, they had started following out of God, worshiping out of God. So he sent Isaiah, no, no, he took, sent Jose down there to prophesy to them about disobedience. When he went down to prophesy to them, he first brought up the history about what God had done. In that first verse it says, When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called him my son and out of Egypt. Now, you know, when you call somebody your son, it got to be some kind of affection there. He loved the children of Israel. So he was calling them his children. Just like when we have our own children. And once they become disobedient, it make a father feel a certain way, knowing that you done given them the right instruction and them did everything you can for them. And then all that a certain, they go in a totally different direction of what you had taught them and told them the rights from the wrong. And this is what was happening to the, the children of Israel. They had been disobedient. So what Jose did, he went down and told them a little about what God had did for them. He let them know about when they was captured in Egypt, how they were enslaved, how God blessed them. Even while they was enslaved, they, they saw them growing so much, they got afraid that if this tribe keep on growing, they might take over us. So what they did, they did put people over them. So we're going to stop this, the mother plowing so many children because they were growing so much. So we're going to put some hard labor on them. And let the harder the labor to put on the more children they was having. They just kept on growing and kept on mother plowing. So he was just showing them how God was still blessing them in that situation. And then they was there because of that disobedience. Yet still God loved them and God came and brought them out of that situation. Now he was warning them that if they keep on doing what their forefathers did, then these same things are going to ha happen to them. So how many times do we tell our earthly children 
that if you keep on doing these things, that you're going to run into some trouble. And the, the, the godly advice that we try to give to our children and the godly advice that we receive, that we have to follow it the same way. So he was just warning them that God is a merciful, graceful God, but he do not want us to continue to do the thing that will lead us to destruction because if we keep on doing the same thing that he asked us not to do, then that leads to destruction. That God loved his chosen people and they continue to be disobedient, but God still showed his love and compassion towards them. And the second verse said, as they called them, so they went from them. They sacrificed unto Balaam and born incense and grave in it. Now they don't went out there and start wishing out of God. Image. Ears that can't hear. Eyes and can't see. Just an object that they worship. And they had a living God that had did all this for them. They had a history to go back and show how God had led them out of situation. And now you're going and in back into a situation that you just got out of. So how many times God done brought us out of the situation? Lord, I'm so glad I'm out of that situation. I ain't going to never do nothing else. After a period of time, Wander back doing the same thing that you were doing before. So, you know, we can talk about the Israelites, they was hard, stiff necked, they God did all this to them, but we, we do the same thing. God keep blessing us and bring us out of situations, and sometimes we continue to do wrong, continue to go in the wrong direction. But this is lesson is telling us to return back to God and just and do the thing that is right. The thing that you taught is right, that's what you should do each and every day of your life. And if the lesson, the other verses in that reading, just let them know that God, he led them by the hand. He led them out of the wilderness. He kept his arm and protection around them. They know it was a miracle. Nobody else do something like that but and you lead them out of a situation. So now they were getting a warning that if you continue to do these things, then you might end up just like your forefathers, in bondage because of sin. But right now, I'm here for you to return to the true and living God so that you can avoid all these situations that you are going to get in. And how many times we can say to ourselves or we have told to our children, you didn't listen to me. You was hard here. The things I told you to do, you didn't do. The thing I told you not to do, that's what you did. And this caused this problem that is up on you now. So God has given us that same warning each and every day that we continue down the wrong path and it could lead to destruction. Okay, we're going to go to the second outline. God, we affirming love. Verses 7 through 10. And 7 to 10 read, And my people are bent on backsliding from me, though they call them to the most high, knowing it all will exalt him. How shall I give up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee? Israel. How shall I make thee Atma? How shall I see thee Zebra? My heart is torn within me. My repentance are kindled together. Uh, could you, I'm going to read the scripture, Deuteronomy 21, 21st chapter, the 18th through the 21st verse. And it reads,
If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father, or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, he will not hearken unto them. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him, and bring him unto the elder of the city, and unto the gate of the palace. And they shall say unto the elder of the city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is bloody and a drunken. And all the men of the city shall stone him with stone, that he die, so shall thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. Thank God for Jesus. Now, that was during the time of the law, that if a child was disobedient, just constantly disobedient, you can take him to the elder. And then they will make a decision on him. And then they could stone him to death. But this lesson is telling us, as we get through the next two verses, the ninth verse says, I will not execute the fierceness of my anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One in the midst of thee. I will not enter into the city. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the child shall tremble from the west. God was angry with his children. But God still showed love and compassion. After all their wrong done, he said, I'm not going to bring hurt or harm to you. And those two cities that he named, those two of the cities during the time of Solomon and Gomorrah that he destroyed, he said, I'm not going to destroy you. I'm going to come and be in the midst of you. I'm still going to protect you. I'm not going to let no harm come to you. How many times in this earthly life have our children been disobedient? Probably we were the same way to our parents. Thing that you want to say to them once you got a chance and what you will do and you had a change of heart, one of the spouse might say to the other, just leave it alone this time, he, he'll be all right. The thing that you had in your mind that you wanted to do or say, you had that compassion for your child. And God had that same compassion for his children. That so much that we deserve that he doesn't even put on us. But we cannot just keep trying him because after a length of time, and we keep on doing the same thing over and over, then he will put us in some situation that we know will be caused out of disobedience. So after warning them, threatening them, God still showed love for his chosen people whom he had made a covenant with. And we know who came out of this covenant that he promised. That is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So although they have been disobedient all down the line, God still showed his love and compassion for the people of Israel. And not only for the people of Israel, show that same love for us each and every day. So he asking us, it's a different period and a different time, but he still expects us to show that same kind of love, that same kind of commitment towards him. Uh, the third outline, the punishment of Israel. 12, 12 chapter 1 and 2. Just after reconciliation with them, now he's talking about punishment again. And those two verses say, Ephraim, feed is on the wind, and follow after the east wind. He daily increase in lies and desolation. And they do make a covenant with the Assyrian and all it carried into Egypt. The Lord had a controversial 
with Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways. According to his dawn, will he recompense him. Now, God can bless you, brought you out of a situation, somebody that had captured you, that was over you, enslaved you, you're going to go and make them your friend. You're going to try to deal with them and they people of the world. Now, you know, anytime we go out and try to deal with the world, we're going to come up on the short end. We're going to come up on the short end. And, you know, they were talking about following, following the, the wind. And you know some people, if they hear something that sounds good, they'll pick up and take off at it. And it's an old cliche that anything sounds too good to be true, it is. You know, I look at a lot of them old westerns. And if somebody come into town and say, it's gold in the hills, the women, the children, the men, the farmers, they drop everything and run to them hills. They try to get, they try to get quick rich, rich real quick. And it's gonna always be one or two that's not gonna dig. They're gonna wait if any gold they'll find it. Then they're gonna find a way to take it from the woman that did all the labor. It just lets you show that when you follow at them dreams, it just vanity. That's all it is. To run out there at something, and this lesson tell about what God had already done for you. Why would you change and want to go to something new that you know nothing about and gonna take a chance on them and you know who the one that had kept you and blessed you, but yet and still you won't venture out to something else. And usually you always have, as I say, it was nothing but vanity, which means nothing. But you take off and follow. And then this last outline, seek God, love, and justice. That's verse 6 through 14. And that's 6 verse saying, Therefore, turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and judgment, and wait on the God continually. What that verse was, is saying is, God has blessed you. He had kept you. It was him that had kept you and allowed you to have all this. So why get in a hurry and try to lean on your own way to go out and try to accumulate whatever you are trying to accomplish and knowing everything good comes from God. So they were telling them, he done did all this for you. Just wait and depend on him for whatever your needs are. Wait and repeat on God to fulfill those needs. But once we start adventuring out to other places and other things, we can find out it'll end up worse than what we think it is. We go out on our own. So it's just telling us to continue to wait on God. He will supply our need according to our... A lot of times we want things that we don't need. So he's telling him just wait on him. He know what we need and he know the time that we need. So just wait on the Lord. And that's something a lot of us don't have is patience. What we want, we want it now. But it's saying, wait on the Lord, continue. Continue to wait on him. And in his time, then he will give us what we need. And Lord knows this seventh verse. He is a merchant. The balance of receipt are in his hand. And he loves to oppress. Now that receipt is considered as scale. 
Now, when I was working, every once in a while, I would grind a bag for a week. So, you know, I would go to the store. I'd say, I want a half a pound of cheese, a half a pound of turkey ham, a half a pound of bologna. So, you know, when you got the scales, they take off more than they put on. They throw it up there. So it was talking about how the mushroom would take, how they were cheating the people. And they used the mushroom for example. But look at today's situation. The scales is in the hands of the bankers. You look at your little bank account, which you like mine, it little, and you see what they give you on your little earning, you can't even compute it. But that same bank will tell you we have a credit card, you can sign up for it, and they charge you 25% interest. And it's the same bank they're using your money. So the scales is in the hands of the one that make the decision. Look at the scale of justice, just in this situation. The same rule doesn't apply to everybody. The scale take advantage of certain people. The school system, all the systems have scale, but all of them not treated fairly. So this lesson is talking about justice. So we have the scale. We elect political leaders. We put the scales in the hand of a president. The president have a, the option to try to bring peace within a country, and sometimes they bring disruption in a country. And we can see what's going on all around us right now. If we put the scales in the wrong hand, and those hands are disrupted, then it falls on the backs of the people. And most of the people is always taken advantage of is the poor people. The one that have problem that you can take advantage of, they take advantage of. I look at these credit alone. They come out, they'll have you to sign papers, and they have that little fine print on the bottom of that paper that you really can't even see. And you call them and ask them a question, they say, well, it's in the contract, and you don't see it nowhere, and they got it in that little black right like in that like it's a black mark. But it's saying things that don't even that don't even apply. That when you get in that situation, you done lost everything that you had. And they make and 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 in this in the next verse, it's saying what they feel like is fair. They getting rich and they don't feel like they doing nothing wrong to accomplish what they are doing. So when people are taking advantage of other people, they don't have no heart. They they say they got their riches and they feel like they did it on their own and when they taking it off the backs of other people. And that seventh verse and the eighth verse said, and Ephraim said, yes, I am become rich. I have found me out substance. In all my labor, they shall find no iniquity in me that were of sin. Now, <laughs> If I don't rob you with a pencil, although I didn't use a gun, and took everything you had, I still robbed you. And he feel that it was gone, so I ain't did nothing to nobody, but he done took everything that somebody had. And he don't feel no guilt of what he had done. And the eighth verse, and Ephraim and Ephra is known as the, um, the Northern Kingdom, Israel, the Northern Kingdom, and it said, oh, the, the neighbor, and I that am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt will yet make thee dwell in tabernacle as the days of Solomon's feast. 
what that meant was what you doing, you gonna pay for it. And what he was telling them by those tents, those tents were set up when when they came out of Egypt, once a year they had a feast to let them know that this feast was for God protection and bringing you out of bondage. So every year for a whole week you had to go sit down and go through the ritual of what you had to go through. Thanking God and praising God. Now, he said, you, you won't have to come out of your homes and come to tent and be just as if it was your forefather. The thing that they went through, the same sin that you're doing, the same thing is going to happen to you. So history is good for us to know. When we see things happen to our generation, they give us instruction. We should be able to learn from them. And in the other verse, I didn't, I think I left that off a little pause. When it said Judah, they're talking about Judah, the southern kingdom. Now, it would tell them that I see what y'all doing too. And you know how they felt what they doing wasn't bad as the northern kingdom. I drink, but I don't rob nobody. You compare what you're doing with somebody else, that wrong is wrong. And they will let them know that our eyes are on you too. You're going to have to straighten up from your way. And how we should be able to learn from what we see happen to other people. We shouldn't have to let that happen to us from our own experience. We, if we know we be obedient to God, he'll bless us. And we know we be disobedient, he will curse us. So why we want to be cursed? And when we know we can be blessed. So he given us that same choice today. Believe and trust in me. Those are the choices that we had today as they did then. And the tenth verse say, and I have spoken by the prophet, and I have multiplied vision, and you similar to by the ministry of the prophet. That tenth verse said, y'all ain't got no excuses. I don't send people down one after another to warn you, to tell you about your disobedience. I don't use parable, I don't use different messenger to continue to come down and warn you. And yet and still, you continue to be disobedient. And how do they apply to us today? Do we get warning? We get warning each and every day. We have God's word. We have the preacher to preach to us each Sunday, telling us what thus said the Lord. And we have the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and tell us right from wrong. So we, just like the people did, we don't have no excuse. We have the word. In the front of us, we have his Holy Spirit. We have preachers, teachers teaching us. They preach to us, tell us what thus said the Lord. So we get the word each and every day. So we don't have no excuse not to know that being, being disobedient to lead to destruction. And the question was asked, is there iniquity in Gilead? Surely. There are vanity. They sacrifice bullock and get there. Yea, the altar as they have heaped in the front of the field. They wish it out of God. And it said that all the altars are going to be burned down. It's going to be like Asher in an open, desolated field. So what are you what are you out there wishing? What can it do to you? He said he was going to destroy it. So you wish it's something that doesn't have anything in it, no benefit for you. And as a 
God telling us and we telling our children that when you run out there, these things can lead to destruction. And you know, a lot of things that when I was coming up, my father them could see, I couldn't see, I could give instruction. And at the time, I could not see it. I, I didn't understand it. Didn't even want to understand at the time. But as time went by, they knew a lot more than I thought they did. And just like the day, telling your children sometimes, they think they know everything. Some things you tell me like hit up on deaf ears. But these things we have to continue, just like the prophet them had to continue to go down there to tell them. We have to continue to tell our children when they away from continue to go wrong in the wrong direction, we should never give up on them. Because from this lesson we see, don't care how hard headed the Israelite was, God never did give up on them. Those his chosen people, he loved them. He had made a covenant with them. Regardless of what they did, he got disobedient, they were punishing, but he still loved them. And we have to whip our children, discipline, tell them right from wrong, tell them the word. And in time, as this lesson say, the one that have strayed, that they will return and come back to God and justice. That is which is doing the right thing. And that 12 verse said, and Jacob fled into the country of Syria, and Israel served for a wife, and for a wife kept sheep. So we know a little about the history of uh, Jacob by birthright. Mm -hmm. I hear me to his brother, Christian in between them. And you know from us today, when it comes to something that you think is supposed to be yours, and somebody else is in up possession, there's usually going to be some little noise behind that. It, it, as a matter of fact, you, you, you have more disgruntled. You know, everybody hates to lose, lose loved ones, but when you lose the loved one, you see some attitude, some attitude, some of everything come out because of possession. It might be a TV, things that are mine. But he stole his inheritance and he had to get out of town. He was moving. But it just showed you being deceitful, what it can lead to. And being deceitful, sometimes the things that you do come back and end up on you worse than what you did. So the lesson is telling us to be honest, to be fair. But the one thing about Jacob, what they talk about, even in his own daughter, how he had to put in some extra years for his marriage, labor, he came back to God. And he wrestled with God and said, I'm not gonna leave until you bless him. So he knew where his help come from. And sometimes we have to go through something before we come back to our senses to know it was God all along that had kept us and did for us. We can try tricky ways to try, try to receive stuff illegal, but all of that is different from doing the thing the right way and knowing God was our supplier. So it was just letting you know, and it was talking to them, the children, that y'all are deceived, just like your forefather. You're being trickery out here, trying to get something for nothing, trying to manipulate people. You know, have you ever met somebody that anytime you see them, you know they got a game to run on you. They're trying to get something for nothing. And when you know those people sometimes, you say, no, not today. If you're trying to sell you something or do something, but you know it's a scheme to try to get something for nothing. So trickery is not the way as Christians should be. We should be just and right. And this lesson also, it was talking about how God had blessed them. And you know, sometimes we should be satisfied with whatever we got. We'd be satisfied with it. 
And what God has blessed us with, let us be a blessing to somebody else. Instead of, uh, I'm looking over there at the rich and famous. And I'm going to try to use manipulative ways to try to accomplish what they have. And this is what this lesson was telling me, how they were running out for dreams, trying to do things to increase their riches. And, and, and they were feeling then that if they were rich, God would bless them, regardless how they received it. That God, that they, God would bless them because they were considered as rich. And the 13th verse says, and by prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. God was just telling us that how he had protected us and kept us, how he brought us out of all situations. And out of bringing everybody out of Egypt, Jesus came out of that same bloodline. Now we have grace and mercy. We do not honor that hard labor demand that was put on the Israelites. But God still being faithful. Grace and mercy on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, that we all may have a right to the tree of life. So he has shown his love, not just for the Israelites, for the whole world. So God has been good to all of us, and he expected us to show love and justice. And justice is doing the right thing. Being nice when you're supposed to be nice. It's not something that I'm going to be for certain people. Just is just being right. Do the, do the right thing. And as we see the day that going on all around us, what this lesson it calls for look like it's the opposite of what's going on in our society today. Like we see more hate and injustice than we are innocent. Same rule doesn't apply to every to everybody. I, I can get away with something, you can't. I can get along, you can't. I can do wrong and get away. With. God is not pleased with that. He wants a just system. I remember from being three scores and 10, I was born in the South. And I know how some of the situation was. The justice system wasn't even, and it's still not even. But when I look back, over my life and over the, the black race, yeah. how God had kept up. Because what the race had to go through, knees had been on our neck and our back for a long time, generation after generation. But look, after every roadblock it did, Look how God has blessed us. If our four parents could just look at how God had been in our life, how he had blessed us, and where we are now. So don't let us come back and be like the Israelites. God has blessed us, kept us, and then we try to venture out and engage in the things of the world. He telling us to continue to depend on him. He has blessed us, kept us, why we want to leave him now. So he just telling us to continue 
to trust him, believe him, because he had taken care of him. I laughed with one of my, my friends, I always tell him, I said, you know we've been blessed. God done brought us from pulling Cadillac, pulling concept to driving Cadillac. He have did wonders in our life. We got more now than they will ever think of that we will be able to accomplish. And it was all from the grace of God. How he had kept us, how he had blessed us. And all he had done for us. So let us continue to show that same kind of love that he showed towards us each and every day. And let us show justice. Do to others that we would like for them to do unto us. That is one of the golden rules they always say, do unto others you. Because you know you are not going to hurt yourself, I don't think. And you don't hurt nobody else. Be fair. If you can help someone, help someone. Be a blessing. If God has blessed us, let us bless someone else. So I think that brings us close to the end of the day. Just a blessing today. We're going to continue to stay in prayer. There's a lot going on around us. Uh, so we just continue to stay in prayer. God has been good, and we just continue. Let him lead and guide us each and every day. So we just thank you. So now I have a word of prayer. Oh, gracious Father, we just thank you for the day. Another day you have been given again the beginning of time. Thank you. You've been so good and merciful to each and every one of us. Continue to bless this church. Continue to bless our family. Bless our surroundings. That you heal this land. This virus is going wrong. They're wrecking not only this area, but the whole world. We just pray for more love, more peace, more understanding, more justice. Continue to put love in our heart. That we'll be able to treat our brother and our sister the way that you want us to treat them. So we just want to thank you today for being so good and mercy. Another opportunity to come out and lift up and praise your holy name because you surely have been good to each and every one of us. Leave me a blessing more after your son Jesus' name. Amen.